Welcome from all of us at Ruston Church of Christ. Thank you for joining with us today in our worship. We pray that you're staying safe and healthy during this time of social distancing. And hopefully this is gonna be over real soon and we'll be able to get back together and worship together in one place. Today, again, we will have an opportunity to join our hearts together in singing praise to God, having prayer time and a study of God's word. And we will also have opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper. So if you'll have your communion supplies ready at that time, then we will commune together at that time. Today, our lesson is gonna come from God's word, which will be in Colossians chapter three. So you might wanna go ahead and turn there and be ready. But let's join together in our worship as we begin with a word of prayer. Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, we are grateful and thankful for another day of life. We're grateful and thankful for the blessings that you've afforded to us, keeping us in your care. And we just pray, Father, that you would bless this world that is uh, in, in such difficult times right now and, and help us through this time of, of this pandemic that the virus will soon be gone away and we can come together and worship you together as you know that you want us to do. Now, Father, bless our worship today as we sing together, as we pray together, as we study your word together, and as we commune together in remembrance of Christ and his sacrifice for us on the cross. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. for 
forsaken by his God. Tis midnight and from ether plains is born the song that angels know. sweetly soothe the Savior's woe. As we prepare our minds for the partaking of the Lord's Supper, I want us to focus a little bit uh, as we prepare on the events of the crucifixion of Christ. Because the Lord's Supper is a memorial to the time that Jesus was crucified dying on that cross so that you and I could be saved. We're going to take our readings today from the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 19, if you would like to turn and read with us. Verse 1, So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and they said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him with their hands. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I'm bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. And Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And then we go down to verse 14, still in John 19. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. As we think about that, that cruel scene when Jesus went to the cross and how his body was bruised and battered for our salvation, Let's remember that as we partake of the bread today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing that we have in being a part of your family. We thank you that you loved us enough to send Jesus to this world, to live a sinless life, and then to be so cruelly beaten and tortured and die so that we could have salvation. And so today, Father, as we partake of the Lord's Supper and the bread that we're to partake of that reminds us of that body. Just help us to set our minds upon the cross in memorial of what he's done for us. May we take this in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable to you in remembrance of Christ. For we pray in his name. Amen. As we prepare to partake of the bread, we'll continue our reading in John chapter 19. We'll start in verse 25. It says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on his and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. 
Then the soldiers came and broke the leg of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And it was that blood that was shed on the cross that, is, that cleanses us from our sins. And as we go and, and pray to our Father and prepare to partake of the fruit of the vine that is an emblem of that blood, may we remember that scene of the cross. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, Lord, pray that you would be with each one now who is about to partake of the fruit of the vine that represents your son's blood that was shed there on the cross. Father, may we remember the suffering that Jesus endured for us, both physically and emotionally, having to, to deal with all of those things on the cross, to be looking at the people that he loved while he gave his life for the sins of the world. Father, pray that each one partaking might do so in a way and manner that is pleasing to you and that our hearts might be truly focused on you. Things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Angry words, oh, let them never from the tongue unbridled slip. May the heart's best impulse ever check them ere they swallow the lips. Love one another, thus at the Savior, children obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus at the Savior, children obey the blessed command. Love is much too pure and holy, friendship is too sacred far. For a moment's reckless folly, thus to desolate and mar. Love one another, thus at the Savior, children obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus at the Savior, children obey the blessed command. Angry words are lightly spoken, bitterest thoughts are rashly stirred. Brightest links of life are broken by a single angry word. Love one another, thus said the Savior, children obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus said the Savior, children obey the blessed command. Our lesson today is going to come from the book of Colossians chapter 3. If you would, open your Bibles there and read with me beginning in verse 18, where Paul writes, Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. I don't have to tell you this because we're all well aware of the fact that America is in debt and the debts are getting deeper. We are in debt to other countries. Families are in debt to financial institutions, mortgage companies, and automobile companies. There seems to be no end to the economic debt that we have accumulated in this nation. But today I want to talk about a different kind of debt, a debt that we all have and a debt that we need to pay. It's called family debt. As husbands, wives, parents, and children, we owe debts to each other. So today I want you to consider with me the debts that we owe to our families in the following ways. First of all, I want to talk about what we do not owe our children. And secondly, what parents do owe their children. And then the third will be what children owe their parents. Now let's consider first of all what parents do not owe their children. 
They do not owe them the latest fashions and the hottest toys. It seems that in America, we have been made to, to, to think that, that our children just have to have all of the uh, latest clothing styles and all the gadgets and all the gizmos that are on the market today, and they are numerous. Have you noticed how people will stand in long lines in order to get the latest things that are available, get their hands on these new toys, stand overnight at times? just waiting for something new to, to be available so they can be the first uh, to achieve it. It's just uh, disappointing to see how people are so enamored by things, possessions, and, and all of these things that the world offers. We need to remember some things that the scripture teaches us as God's people. Adornment should be in character, not in clothing styles, not in a house size, or any other fancy or expensive possession. Peter said it this way in 1 Peter 3, verses 3 and 4. He said, Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. You see, contentment should be in godliness, not in possessions. Paul said it this way to, to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, verses 6 through 8. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. Have you noticed that the, the people who have, have lost property through, due to storms or fire or floods or, or whatever, when they've lost a lot of property... The thing that they are most grateful for when it is all over with is that their lives were spared. They have less concern about the property they lost than the lives that were saved. You see, possessions take second place to life, both physical and spiritual. Secondly, parents don't owe their children a life that is free from the suffering that sometimes comes in being a Christian. We all need to learn that being a Christian is not easy in this world. Paul said it this way to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, verses 10 through 13, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes. And all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse, deceiving and being deceived. You see, we can't shield our, our children from the suffering that they may have as a Christian. But we do need to teach them how to cope with it and how to remain faithful through it, regardless of what trial it may be. Our children need to be taught to glorify God even in suffering. Peter said it this way in 1 Peter 4, 16, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. Secondly, let's consider what parents do owe their children. The first and the foremost of what parents owe their children is a, a father and a mother who love each other. They need that. They need to know that. Ephesians 5, 25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And the older women are, are instructed that they may admonish the young women to love their husbands. Titus 2, verse 4. Husbands and wives, parents need to love each other and their children need to know that. There's no greater gift that a man can give his children than to love their mother. And there is no greater gift that a, a woman can give her children than to love their father. Keep the romance in your marriage. Your children need to know that you love each other. They need to see that you love each other. It'll be an example for them to follow when they get married. And it's our responsibility to set that example. That's my second point here. And that is that parents owe their children a godly example. Regardless of other influences in their lives, parents have the most influence over their children. I think sometimes we forget that. 
Proverbs 22, 6 is certainly a verse that we all heard many, many times. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. But something we need to know that comes out of that verse is that training is by example. That's the best way to train. Think about it this way. The best coaches are those who play the game. And so parents setting an example in training their children. You see, it's hypocritical to expect your children to be what you're not willing to be. Paul gave some advice that's very relevant to this particular point in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse one, when he said, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. We also owe our children structure and discipline. You see, children need discernible boundaries. They need to know where they limitations are one way or the other. That's part of training. It's part of training in any endeavor of life, knowing where the boundaries are. Those boundaries will be tested. You can be sure of it. And parents who love their children will enforce those boundaries, not be persuaded to move them into a different direction to allow more than what they should be allowed. They can and should be moved, even removed, as they grow, as they mature, as they are ready to take full responsibility for their own lives. But while they're still under your care, you need to set boundaries and let them know where they are and then enforce them. You see, unstructured and undisciplined children will have a lifetime of heartaches and suffering, but more so the very real possibility of the loss of their soul. If your children don't go to heaven, remember this. If you don't remember anything else I say in this lesson, remember this. If your children don't go to heaven, don't let it be your fault. Now let's consider thirdly, what children owe their parents. I think sometimes we forget that as our, as our parents, we leave home and, and we are on our own. And even while we're still young and at home, there are things we owe our parents. The first is we owe them love. You see, children respond in kind. Love breeds love. First John 4 verse 9, we love him because he first loved us. That, that's God's love for us and our love in, re, in return back to him. And so it is with parents and children. Parents love their children. Children in turn will love their parents. I, I love my parents because they first loved me. They showed me how to love them and now that shows me how to love my children and my children to love me in turn there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear john wrote in first john 4 verse 18. so we do owe our parents love we owe our parents honor and respect in ephesians 6 and verses 1 through 3 there the apostle paul reminds the church of one of the ten commandments that was to honor father and mother, which was the first commandment with promise. Here he says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then he says, and he calls on that, that Old Testament 10 commandment that was there, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. That phrase obey in the Lord means according to God's will. What is God's will for children in obedience towards their parents. Well, here's something to think about. According to Romans chapter one and verse 30, disobedient children are in the same company as those who are immoral, those who are wicked, those who are haters of God, and many other very wicked things. You see, you cannot enter the kingdom of God with this kind of a disposition towards your parents. Remember Jesus as a 12-year-old boy? Joseph and Mary had, had, uh, had gone to Jerusalem for the Passover. And when they left and started home, they realized Jesus wasn't in their company. So they go back to Jerusalem and they start looking for him. And they finally found him in, in the temple. And, and we know a little bit about that story. But here's what I want you to remember about this. When they found him, notice what he did. This is found in Luke 2, verse 51. It says this, then he, that's Jesus, went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. 
Jesus submitted himself to Joseph and Mary, the Son of God, being raised by earthly parents. If Jesus, the Son of God, could submit to earthly parents, every child on earth can and should do the same. Children who do not show honor and respect to their parents will not show honor and respect to any other adults. That's just a fact. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, 5, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. In that context, he's talking about those who are older, the older generation of people. The attitude of disrespect to other adults usually begins at home. And it will cause problems with school teachers, with the police, and with authority in the workplace. It has to be learned first at home. And then the third thing that we owe our parents is care in their old age. You see, they care for us when we're young. They feed us, they clothe us, they, they house us, they school us. They do all the things that are necessary in bringing us to where we are as adults. Now, it's our turn when they have the need. We care for them when they are old. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 4 says this, But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Repay there simply means you take care of them the way they took care of you. You provide for their needs in their old age like they provided for you when you were young. And widows here can mean male or female. It's not just the lady widows. It's male or female, but more so is a command here to take care of those who have needs who cannot take care of themselves, especially in our families. In fact, those who do not provide care for their families are considered infidels. Here's what Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 4 verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he's denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Household includes those to whom we have the responsibility to care for when they have no way to care for themselves. So yes, we're in debt. Our nation is in debt. Our nation's debt is approaching $25 trillion. I cannot even fathom that number. Our children's grandchildren and great-grandchildren will still be paying on that debt when they are old. And there isn't much we can do about that. But there are debts that we owe and we need to repay them it's family debt family debt is good it's a responsibility that we all have so remember this first of all there are things that we do not owe our children we don't owe them all the frills and all the thrills of life we don't owe them all those gadgets and gizmos that that are that are sold every day uh, constantly in our face and advertisements wherever we look and we cannot shield them from the suffering they may face as a Christian. What we can do is to help them face it and teach them how to face it with faith and trust in God. But then we do owe them parents who love each other. We owe them parents who are giving them a godly example so they can imitate that when they become parents in their life. We owe them structure. We owe them discipline. And we all know, we see it in society, what happens when... When young people are undisciplined, it makes them undisciplined adults. So we do owe them these things. And then we do owe our parents. We are our parents' love. Love your parents. They loved you. You love them. We owe them honor and respect. That needs to be learned and taught and practiced in the home more than anywhere. And we owe them care in their old age. I think we, in a way we need to view our debts the way Paul viewed his, as he stated in Romans 1 and verse 14, where he said, I am debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. And Paul had that, that debt, that feeling of debt to, to these groups of people, and he honored that debt. He respected that debt. He paid that debt. He went into the world and took the gospel to the lost. We have that same indebtedness to our families. And I would hope that we can have that same kind of commitment that Paul had in keeping the debts that we have to our families, that it's according to the will 
of God in every way. So we thank you today for watching this program and joining with us in worship to our Lord. We'll also be presenting a Sunday evening program as well as a Bible study on Wednesday evenings. We invite you to join us, join with us on any, in any of these programs. We are Ruston Church of Christ. Our building is located at the corner of West Woodward Avenue and Ashland Street. If you would like more information on our congregation or Churches of Christ, or would like to enroll in a free, and I emphasize free, no cost to you, Bible Correspondence Course, please send your request to our address, 2300 West Woodward Avenue, Ruston, Louisiana, 71270. Thank you, and may God bless you. Let's bow together as we pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had today to gather together in worship, to uh, pray together, to sing together, to study your word together, and to remember Christ in the Lord's Supper together. And so, Father, bless our day. Bless us uh, as we continue our service to you and, and help us to soon be back together in one place that we may worship you in spirit and in truth as you would have us to do. We thank you for Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. All right, now I'll do a few songs for the kids. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good, when I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, but it makes him very sad. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right, for our last one, we're going to do the, the wise man song. Ready? Let's get our houses built. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The 
foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the foolish man's house went splat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings will come down. Oh, the blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, appreciate those of you for who uh, tuned in this morning. Uh, hope that we can be together once again. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, we're grateful for the opportunity that we've had to uh, be united together in worship this morning. Father, pray that you would be with the doctors who are working on a cure for the virus and a vaccine to prevent it. Uh, pray that they might soon be successful uh, so that these this virus can go away and that we can go back to normal, to be able to be uh, together in worship in, in a full way. And Father, pray that soon, even, even with this going on, that we might be able to meet together uh, in some fashion, to be able to see one another's faces and truly encourage one another. Father, pray that you would be with us as we go throughout our weeks. Help us to take the lesson to heart. To, to love our children, that as children we would love our parents, and that we would uh, treat those relationships in a way that is pleasing and honorable to you. The things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.